Uh, so, I see Dwayne is referring to is the e conversation and the controversial issue in Parliament where the first Deputy Speaker, Joe Oseusu, uh, believed that the interpretation of the constitutional provisions governing the voting procedure in Parliament allowed him or permitted him as the first Deputy Speaker, as opposed to and distinguished from the Speaker properly so called, that in the chair as a second Deputy Speaker, he um, um, Joe Oseyusu, based on his understanding of the, and that's our understanding of some lawyers, we had Moses Fuamoni, a senior lawyer, who agreed with that position, that the second deputy speaker is able to cast a vote uh, during the voting process in parliament. That, that was very clear. Johnson, I see doing Katia's panacea to, to that, or his disagreement, is the panacea is the wrong word, his disagreement with that is steeped in violence because that is the kind of person that he is. And time and time again, we've been saying that people like that should not occupy high political office because we're building a respectable and responsible democracy. If you have people who think that way, they will have to purge their thinking when they become senior officers of the party. If they cannot purge their thinking, they should not be allowed to. In fact, Johnson Asedo Nkata actually sits on the parliamentary board of governors. He's one of them who is governor, and he's saying that sitting on the board of a uh, parliamentary board of governors, where the office of the speaker is very important to that group of people, the, 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 uh, the few uh, wise men, the distinguished people who look after the, the parliament as board of governors, I see Lukatia is one of them, it's nominated by Speaker Bagwin to be there. And he sits on that place, uh, that, that chair, he sits in that chair, in that committee, the high level committee, and they discuss what should happen in parliament. His resolution for the confusion about whether a speaker should uh, be a second deputy speaker or a first deputy speaker should be able to vote or not, his uh, resolution of the matter is that they should slap him. That if it is slapping, that will make him know that he cannot sit in the chair and vote, then that slap should be administered. How can somebody or why should somebody say something like that and get away with it? But that is, that's the point. This is a democracy. We can't have people like, I said, you can tell must apologize for this. I mean, I don't want him to get away from anything. I don't want him to get off the board of anything. I'm not interested in that. But we are interested in setting out the principles that we should apply in this country when we are building a democracy. General Secretary of a party, forget about that. He's sitting on the board of, the, the board of governors of parliament. He's sitting on that board. And he says that the solution to the debates about the, the interpretation of a constitutional provision is that those who agree with the view that the speaker, whether it's first deputy speaker or second deputy speaker, cannot, cannot and should not retain his right to vote. Those who hold that view, they should exercise that view by visiting violence on the speaker when the speaker attempts to do that. Viewers think about it. You see, when we say he's been talking palm wine talk, that's what we mean. This is such an important person, general secretary of the party, who we now understand wants to be chairman of the biggest opposition party, not just biggest opposition party, but the party that has been in government for so many years before. This is a party that has ruled Ghana so many times. And you are the general secretary of a party like that. You do not understand the responsibility that comes with being general secretary of the party. You go stand somewhere, take a microphone, and you are rabble rousing and think that you are talking anyhow. You are supposed to be an example for the people. You're supposed to be an example for the young people who want to come into politics and what you say is that if the speaker doesn't understand and it is a slap that will administer to him we should proceed to do that forgetting that you occupy the you are one of the board of governors of the parliament of ghana nominated by the speaker and you talk like this and you see he doesn't learn his lesson because people cheer him up he talks every day by heart like that. He's always talking like that. As you doing, Katia is always spewing out some of these things that are contrary to the narrative of democracy, that are contrary to the narrative of building a responsible political party and a responsible society. He spews these kind of things that are completely contrary, out of order, out of law. He gets away with this because no one is telling him that in the position that you now occupy, you can't do that. Hear him again. Play me the full one. Hear Johnson Asir Dunkati. I'll come back to the screen. Hear Johnson Asir Dunkati because I'm very disappointed about this. Have a look. Resistance has been imposed on us as a duty. I don't you know. Sir Speaker, I can say, another deputy speaker, because obey referee. No, I say, I could do penalty. I say, I was able to say, I say. Sir, I soon born a manager. Mumana 
Did you hear that? If a, if a deputy speaker, he says if a speaker or a deputy speaker says that he will mount the chair as speaker and then he will also cast a ballot, this is a, a conversation about the interpretation of the constitution. What kind of interpretation should we put on it? A general secretary of a party says that if the speaker elects to mount the chair, the deputy speaker, and also to cast a vote, you have to slap him. That's what he's saying. That if it is a slap, that will make sense to him. There's, there's no slap in this conversation. It's a constitutional provision. We disagreed about it. We go to the Supreme Court for interpretation. That's how democracies are organized. Tell us here, Dunkatia, that we have stopped the Choboy long ago. We are not in the coup d'etat era. Maybe he and Festus Abouadji have some similarity. But tell Johnson, Asir Dunkatia, that he's a former member of parliament. And he became member of parliament when we stopped doing coup d'etats and decided that we will organize our society according to the findings of philosophy, according to the constitution of 1992, which says you should have a parliament, you should have an executive, you you have a judiciary and these are the powers. This is a synergy that is drawn between the three arms of government. He, Johnson, Asir Dunkatia, was part of the process, was part of the, the, the consultative assembly that wrote the constitution. So you see this kind of hypocritical behavior. These are people who have given us a constitution. The constitution says that when you have a controversy about constitutional provisions, you go to the Supreme Court. That's the beauty about constitution. It solves almost every problem. It takes you almost any cul de sac. The constitution will give you what to do with the cul de sac. When you come to a cul de sac among members of parliament, among scholars, among civil society, among media, that can the first deputy speaker, when he is presiding as deputy speaker, can he also elect to participate in the voting over which he himself is presiding? Some say no. Some say yes. The answer lies in the mouth of a panel of the Supreme Court. That's what the Constitution says. I said, I should be telling people that we are going to the Supreme Court to seek an interpretation and clarify this matter. Instead, he says, when the second deputy speaker does that and you have to slap him, slap him. This cannot go unanswered. You can't, you, this, this cannot go unanswered. He can't say that and get away with it. We will call him out. He can't say that and, and we've been calling him out for a long time. And sometimes people think that we are calling him out and we are talking about him and it's too much. But that's the kind of thing he does. Johnson Asir Dunkatia, the general secretary of the NDC, who now wants to be the NDC chairman. Him, that's what he does. He goes to IPAC and he's giggling over there and he creates a problem and all of that. It is him, Johnson Asedun Katia. He's derailing our democracy. Johnson Asedun Katia, the general secretary of the NDC, is derailing our democracy. And I'm calling on the leadership of the NDC in parliament that he sits on the board of governors of parliament. He says that the first deputy speaker should be slapped. If the deputy speaker interprets the constitution in a, in a manner that he believes allows him to sit and also to vote, that Johnson Asir Katia says those who disagree with that, they should go into the parliament and slap the deputy speaker. Johnson Asir Katia is derailing our democracy. Is anybody hearing? Can people hear it? Can they see it? Asir Dun Katia is pulling down the democratic structures that have been laid for 30 years. He's calling for violence against no less a person than the first deputy speaker based on the deputy speaker's interpretation of constitutional provisions. Everyone can interpret constitutional provisions. That's why the constitution says that where there's a constitutional interpretation controversy, it shall be settled by a panel of the Supreme Court. And in Ghanaian, that's where it rises. You see, in law, when you have to go to court for something, especially a civil matter, the law says people must find a community of interest. You must show why you are interested in the matter going to court. It is in respect of constitutional provisions that that limitation is taken off. It says any Ghanaian, all you need to do to go to ask the Supreme Court a question is to be a Ghanaian. That is taken off because it's so fundamental that we don't have to fight over interpretation of the Constitution. We leave it to the Supreme Court to determine. But here is a general secretary of a party, Johnson Asir Dunkatia, who says that if you do disagree with the speaker's interpretation of those provisions of the Constitution, go and slap him. I mean, this is, this is, this is the lowest. This is the lowest that you can get in a democracy. I mean, anybody can say that. Not the general secretary of a party. And worse still, he sits on the governing board of parliament. 
He, Asidun Kachia, is there. He's seated there, nominated by the Speaker of Parliament. The other day when the majority complained about him being in the chamber, wrongfully complained, I have to say, the majority didn't have any business complaining about Asidun Kachia being in the public gallery because anybody could have been in the public gallery. Yes, he was there. And the explanation was that he was there because he sits on the governing board of parliament. That was legitimate explanation. That was correct. He was there because he sits on the board of parliament. Yeah, that's correct. And if you sit on the board of parliament, you go to take a microphone, standing somewhere, addressing party people, telling them, instead of telling them what the constitutional provisions are and how you're going to use those constitutional provisions to, to compel the Supreme Court or urge on the Supreme Court to arrive at a conclusion that the NDC likes, you say to the people, and they were clapping for him, that they should go and slap the speaker if he decides that he is sitting and also voting, Johnson Asiedun Katia is derailing the 30 year gain of our democracy. Have a look at it, last one, and then we go to the touch screen. Have a look. Asiedun Katia, the full video. Have a look. Resistance has been imposed on us as a duty. I don't you know. Sir Speaker, I can say, an adeptive speaker because of a referee. No, I say, I could do penalty. I say, I was up away to say, I say, I assume one of the manager, who won a sum manager, a messenger for him. Political leader should never talk like that. Asir Nketia should bow down his head in shame. He should apologize to John Mahama, the leader of the NDC. He should apologize to the NDC members of parliament because talking about the speaker is derailing parliament. He should not talk like this. He should not talk like this. The revolution is over. The rabble rousing is over. Now we are doing competition of ideas. We're doing competition of development ideas. How to get our country moving forward. That's what we are doing. NDC and MTP, let's think. It's not this kind of rabble rousing that ended in 1982. It's never going to come back. Anyway, forget about Johnson. I see you doing Katia for now, but I'll come back to him. Sister.